Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial. In today's video, I'm gonna cover something which we did quite a while ago. It was actually one of my very first tutorials and I basically showed you how you can convert a jar into an EXE and basically install your program onto a specific user's computer. Now, the issue that we have with that uh, recently is that Excelsior Jet, which is a program that we used previously, does not actually support the latest JDK as soon as it is released. So the problem is that many people are downloading the latest JDK because obviously that's a good practice to do with Java and they're finding out that Excelsior Jet is not actually showing up uh, their main class, which is basically coming down to the fact that Excelsior Jet does not support the latest JDK. Uh, and sometimes it can take a number of years. In fact, they just recently started supporting 1.7. So I've gone ahead and done a little bit of research and found a program called JSmooth, which is an EXE wrapper. Now this is important because it basically converts your jar into an EXE, but does not put it into something like an MSI installer, which is what Excelsior Jet does. Now, if this is not what you want, you might have to look for another type of application which does that. But for this uh, specific tutorial, and for most people, this is gonna be more than good enough. So what you wanna firstly do is head on over to jsmooth.sourceforge.net. I will leave the link in the description if I don't forget. And uh, you can see the website's pretty old because the newest release was actually in 2007, but it is still working absolutely perfectly. So what you wanna go and do is head on over to the download file and just simply follow uh, follow all the links that take you to the actual uh, download itself. It's really, it's completely free. You guys can see it takes you to SourceForge. You just click on JSmooth. Now what you're gonna do is choose the most recent version at the time of release, which is 0.9.7-7. And you're gonna go on ahead and download whichever one is suitable for you. Most people, as you can see, is downloading the setup.exe, uh, which is an installer that installs in your program. Uh, and that's basically what you wanna use. So go ahead and download the setup.exe, pretty small, 3.9 megabytes, and install it as normal onto your computer. Now the next thing you wanna do is you wanna open up NetBeans. Okay guys, so once you have NetBeans open, you wanna locate the file that you wanna to convert to an exe. So in my case, I wanna convert my quick launch widget which all it does essentially is just opens up uh, whatever I click on. So Twitter, Amazon, YouTube, it opens up all these links and I call it the quick launch widget because it opens up these four addresses uh, really quickly. So what you wanna go ahead and do is firstly compile and build. You wanna ensure that your program is up to date as well as all the files in the dist folder, which you can see it does right here. It basically creates a directory and it updates everything within the dist folder. So once you have that, you guys can go ahead and just copy this um, that directory, control C, open up your file explorer, just paste it in there. And you guys can see we are at your specific app into the dist folder. Now, if you guys uh, wanna navigate manually, just navigate to your NetBeans projects folder, uh, the app name or the app folder name, and then into the dist folder. Now in the dist folder, you guys can see we have lib, which stands for libraries, and we have absolute layout, which is very important because we use the absolute layout library in our program. If you didn't use that, if you use something uh, like relative layout or something like that, it may not have that, it may have it. Uh, and you can see when you double click on the jar, it actually runs the app and you can see everything opens up as normal. So that's basically how you generate uh, a jar file within NetBeans itself. Now what you wanna uh, go ahead and do is open up JSmooth, okay? And you guys can see it gives you a nice little welcome to JSmooth page. Uh, when you get it, it might be fairly small. I suggest going ahead and making it a little bit bigger. So that's the welcome page. And this basically on the left is your navigation. So you wanna click on skeleton. Now it got these little hints, these little question marks which you can hover over and get a little bit more information from. Now the first one is the skeleton selection. So we have Win Service Wrapper, Auto Download Wrapper, Console, Windowed, and Custom Web Download Wrapper. Now we have actually created a GUI. So you can either go with a window wrapper or console wrapper. Now if you click on console wrapper, you can actually see it gives you some information about what this wrapper does. So if you click on something and realize that it's not exactly what you want, like for this one right here, you can see it can launch a standard GUI application. However, it will also show the command prompt, which we do not want. So we wanna go ahead and create the window wrapper, which is, you can see right here, no console input output, uh, output is displayed. And you can also see it's, uh, it's basically meant for GUI applications. So you can also create a little, um, a little message here. 
if Java is not found, which some people don't have Java, um, which is so it's a good idea to just put a little message, put the URL, and it will go ahead and uh, download it if it detects that there's no uh, runtime environment installed. So we're going to go on ahead, click onto the executable, and we're going to select executable binary. So all you want to go ahead and do is just type in the name of your application. So mine is quick, quick launch widget, and make sure to put .exe at the end. You can see when you hover over, it tells you uh, it must end with .exe. Now you can go ahead and select an executable icon. You can see um, you should use .ico files. However, you can see PNG, JPEG, all of that type of stuff works. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on these three dots right here. Navigate to this image that I've created, which is this icon image right here. And basically what I found out that uh, JSmooth actually resizes your icon to 32 by 32 and 256 colors. So it's a 32 by 32 image with 8 bit RGB. So that's what I've gone ahead and done. I've created an 8 bit RGB and made it 32 by 32. Now, if your image is uh, bigger than 32 by 32, it'll resize it. And also, if it has like 16 or 32 bit colors, it'll reduce it down to 8 bits. So, the current directory, uh, you can put this anywhere you want. I'm just going to go ahead and I'll put it in my documents folder. Just right there. You're going to click on application. Now, this is where you actually select your jar and uh, the other types of information which creates the functionality. So because we're going to be using a jar file, we're going to click on use an embedded jar very firstly. We're going to click on these three dots and we are going to navigate to where we saved, uh, where our jar is actually saved. You can see for me, it's a NetBeans projects, quick launch widget and dist. So I'm just going to navigate there, NetBeans, quick launch widget, dist, and we're going to select our quick launch widget jar. Now you can go ahead and go to the main class, click on these three dots, and you can see it has available classes. All you wanna do is double click on it. It'll show you your package. And then just go ahead and look for your main class, which in my case is widget GUI.java. And now it's been selected. Now lastly, this is where you specify all the other class parts used by, uh, used by the application. So for us, we also have not only our main jar, but also a library with the absolute layout included. So if you don't put this here, this uh, GUI actually won't show up because it doesn't have the absolute layout uh, library installed or wrapped with our, actu uh, with our actual jar file, our main jar file. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that. Move on over to J, uh, JVM, Java Virtual uh, Machine Selection. And you guys can see we can specify the minimum and maximum uh, JVM version. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select 1.6. And for maximum JVM version, um, you don't actually have to include it because this uh, this wrap is pretty smart. But if you want to, it's good to just go ahead and select the, the maximum if you want. Uh, you can also use a JVM bundle with your application. So if uh, the person that's installing the application doesn't have the virtual machine, you can actually include the file that will automatically uh, install on their system. So lastly, the Java virtual machine configuration now you just select maximum uh, memory, initial memory allocation. So for maximum memory, uh, you can allocate the maximum amount of memory that can be used for this application. So for something as small as this, we can go ahead and select it to be maybe 60 megabytes. And initial memory allocation will be 10. Now it's completely up to you guys. If you guys have a very complicated application, I suggest making these two values bigger. Um, so initially it'll allocate 10 megabytes of memory to the application, if it needs more, it'll use uh, a maximum of 60. It'll keep increasing until you reach a maximum of 60. And then if you, uh, you know, you might start noticing things like uh, lagging and your system might freeze and stuff like that. So guys, that's about it. All you have to do now is click on this little button right here, or you can go to project, compile, and let's just compile it to our desktop. And we're gonna call this compile. You can name it anything you want, it doesn't really matter. And boom, there we go, saving exe, done. And here you guys can see our quick launch widget. If you go to properties, you can see it is .exe. So once you double click on that, actually, let me control alt delete quickly guys. Uh, I'm just gonna end the platform. And you guys can see as soon as I click the double, uh, double click the exe, it automatically loads up my application and I can start using my application as if it was normal. So in the next tutorial, guys, we're going to learn how to actually launch this application on a Windows startup, uh, which is something that I've gotten a lot of requests to do in the past. 
And by doing it with uh, with JSmooth, we can actually easily open up our EXE as soon as your Windows computer launches. So that's it for this tutorial, guys. Pretty easy, pretty simple to do. Uh, I've covered everything you need to know to make your EXE. And the benefit of this is that your file size is not actually 20 megabytes like Excelsior GH. You can see it's only 584 kilobytes uh, on my disk. And of course, it's much faster and free. And also don't forget guys, it works with every single available JDK. So that's it for this tutorial guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to leave us a like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you guys next week with the next video.